You will tell me what I want to know, or there will be consequences. Do your worst, Chrome Dome. It is not I you have to contend with. <laughs> no, not that. Anything but that. Then there was the time that I got stuck in traffic back in oh, I can't talk. remember what year it was, but it was a doozy because there was absolutely nothing to do except You thought it was gonna be beef boss. Oh, you thought wrong, motherfucker! Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, let's take a look at the Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified series Special Missions Cobra Island Wayne Beachhead Sneeden. Sneeden. As everybody who's buying this new G.I. Joe line knows, Finding these at Target right now, whew, it's a total crapshoot. Your store may have them and not want to put them out. Your store may not have them. Your store may have them, have them on the shelf, but everybody's fighting for those figures. It's just a cluster right now. So special thanks to Dan Drews on Instagram for hooking me up with this because, man, I wouldn't have had it otherwise. But remember, according to Target Corporate, these are due out August 14th, which is this Friday. So hopefully things become easier here in the very near future. But looking at the package, it's what we've seen with this line so far. The window showing everything you're getting, the artwork from different artists. On the side, another look at the artwork. It's actually different from the front. But Beachhead looking all badass with his, what is that, a radar shooting laser gun? On the back with this Cobra Island special missions series, they show a map of Cobra Island. And for some reason, I really love this. Hey, wait a second, isn't this in The Incredibles? On the other side, Here's the different ranks and, and uh, specialties. This has essentially taken the place of the file card. And what you have to do there is go to the G.I. Joe website and kind of decode it, really. The outer bars show that Sneeden is a level three G.I. Joe. And then the mobile site is not the greatest. You have to click on these things to actually see what they are. One of Beachhead's specialties is covert ops. Uh, right there. There's light weapons. The lightning is Vanguard. Front line of combat, taking the fight to the enemy, and then there's also weapons development. It makes it much easier when the characters are listed in the thing because it just puts it all right there, but for some reason, Beachhead isn't on the site. But then on the top, G.I. Joe window number 10 on the bottom, here's your legalese, here's your barcode, but let's get this open and see how he compares to the rest of the kick-ass G.I. Joes. Freedom. There's the usual card. We know what this is at this point. It's a bunch more warnings of don't put them in your mouth. On the insert, if you want to clip that new style file card, I guess you can. Getting Mr. Sneeden out of the package. Oh, he cuts a good silhouette. It's just an awesome looking beachhead figure. Well, okay, the shoulders do seem a little low, but we'll get into that. There are some new parts here, but to get it out of the way, he does share Duke's pants. And I was wrong with that on the Cobra Trooper. I got it in hand, realized, oh, Cobra Trooper is new sculpt. For Beachhead, he shares the same crotch piece. He shares the same upper legs. Same knee pads, just the colors toned way, way down. They even have the same lower legs and boots, but back when we got Duke, I thought, why is this a separate piece on top? That's so they can swap them out and give each character a different look, even though they are sharing parts. Because we also have Duke with a holster and one strap going around his leg. Uh-uh, Beachhead has to have that on securely. There's three straps coming around on his holster and then for the knife sheath down on the shin, that's got three straps too. That's craziness. And then he also has this new overlay on the left side. It's got two straps, and I'm not quite sure what that is, but it adds some detail. But we get up to the vest, and that is all new. Again, they could have reused this from something else, but you have the long pouches on front, and then the middle has clasps and some straps. That comes up and around, and then Joe Pro, of course, on the right side here. That comes around to the back, and there's some armor plating that has some damage to it. Has a couple of buckles for, you know, <laughs> securing himself down or something, and then straps coming around. He also shares hands with Duke. Instead of the red coming across the knuckles, there's the green this time, which which, you know, fits the overall color scheme. But that also makes Beachhead a lefty because it's got the up and down weapon wielding hand on the left side. But the most beach heady thing about the figure is the arms, the torso, which I'm not gonna pull this off, and then of course the head. It's got this stripe texture to it, which you always associate with this character. But there's also this padding sculpted onto it 
just a little contrast. There's a pouch up on the shoulder that is part of the actual shirt or undershirt, whatever. And then up at the head, if you're a customizer, we've been waiting for a head like this for years. It has that matching lines, like in the shirt, like this is one big piece. But on the front, there's the smoothness, just like the back of the arms. Plus it makes it more than just a stocking mask. The neck also does a good job of continuing that detail while giving it a loose look. They could have just went with this texture, going up a fairly undetailed neck, but nah, they went in and have the front of the throat and some wrinkles. And that carries all the way around to the back, and then you see at the shirt, it's got kind of a collar there. But when you have a masked character like this, you run the risk of it looking plain or uninterested, but the eyes just peeking through with the brows, it does a fantastic job of giving it some attitude. You raw hides are so green. And we've heard that there are variant eye colors too. I got the brown. I'm not sure which is the correct color for Beach Head, but I feel like the brown kind of blends in with the rest of the colors, especially since there's brown down here on the vest. And speaking of paints, I like that this Cobra Island assortment has toned down the colors from Wave 1. You see Duke, and he has semi-traditional colors with the yellow up at the shirt, and then the dark green, the light green, but then there's red punched in, and there's blue, and they're down here there's some goldish colors, silver. If I had any complaint about Wave 1, it was over the top with the color palettes. With Cobra Island, they've toned that back a bit. Of course you have the Joe Pro up here and it brings that light blue and red. Also carries the red down to the holster. But really that's the only garish colors that are sticking out at you. But as much as I like that they've pulled back on the paint apps, I see all this fantastic sculpted detail in here and I wish the buckles may have been painted silver here. Or maybe the clasps on some of the pouches. I'm not asking for super gold colors or let's bring in a light blue to the whole thing. But a little accents of silver would go a long way here. Also, I talked about the overall silhouette a minute ago. In action poses, it looks fantastic. In just straight up at attention, the shoulders seem low or the neck is long, the head sits high. There's something going on up here. They already sculpted this part higher to accommodate the butterfly shoulders. Well, I don't know. There is a lot of gap there. But then you have the vest coming up on top of that as an overlay piece, adding more thickness. And I think they made the neck slightly longer to offset that look. You didn't want the head being buried down in the vest. Like what ended up with Roadblock. Roadblock's vest kind of comes up around his head a bit. But again, he also has that low shoulder look. So it's just part of the line because of so much stuff happening at the torso. But you get him crouched down into a pose and around and through and you don't hardly notice that. Also, I'm about to get into articulation, but the more and more this line goes on, you know, the, the whole, what, seven figures, eight figures I have now. I, at first, I loved the added articulation of the drop down hip to give you a little more forward, but the further we get into the line, the more I don't care whether it's there or not. I don't know if it's because it's reuse of Duke and this is a second run, more plastic through those molds. There's almost a looseness here. It kind of, you can push it up and it sticks there. And even in down position, I haven't had a lot of trouble when I'm putting him in poses of him, of it affecting posing. But I don't know, I'll be running along, I'll be going through stuff, and then I'll realize, oh wait, that's down. I didn't put it like that. Get back up. And while the drop down does give it just a few more degrees on the up, I don't know. I like that it's there, and I always enjoy that joint, but is it going to be a problem in the long run, I guess is what I'm saying. We already saw the torso on the standard release Snake Eyes be a little loose, and I don't know if that's because of mold degradation or something. But going over articulation, there is a hinge at the top of the neck going to a ball. You can look all the way up. There's also a ball at the bottom of the neck, and with that, you can bury the chin into the chest. All kinds of tilt. Then, of course, there's swivel. Butterfly joint at the shoulder goes forward and back. Nice range there. But again, the vest gets in the way. We saw that with the Cobra Trooper. So you come forward and it boop, runs right into that. Hinge of the shoulder goes up to 90. Swivels around. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow comes up past 90. There's swivel at the wrists. And on the right side, there is side to side hinge. On the left, there's up and down. There is a hinge at the mid torso, but like a lot of other figures in this series, it's held back by the chest armor. But there is a ball joint at the waist and that hula hoops nicely. And even a little bit of crunch. I wish, <laughs> with Cobra Trooper, I kept pushing until it finally crunched. <laughs> no, it doesn't seem to want to move. Like I talked about a minute ago, there is a drop down hip that goes forward, back, out. Oh man, better in Spider-Man. Swivel at the hip, hidden behind all those straps right there. Double knee, out, bing. Swivel at the boot, hinge at the angle goes back. 
forward, and then forward facing pin for some rocker. For accessories, Beachhead comes with a rifle of some kind. I haven't bought a Nerf gun in a while. Apparently a lot of the G.I. Joe weapons are based on Nerf guns, but I don't know Nerf, so it doesn't really bother me. That's the same for the crossbow pistol or whatever this thing's called. Again, a nice sculpt to it, and it feels like there should be something right there, but there's not. Comes with a nice little compact pistol, and that is a reuse of Duke's pistol. And then there's also a fairly basic knife. The thing about these, they're molded in the same green color as Beachhead's shirt. And like I said, I'm okay with it reusing Nerf guns, that they're not realistic weapons, but at least paint them like there could be realistic weapons. I would have preferred for this to at least been cast in black plastic or something. And with all these you have the patented push and twist. It's easy enough to get the finger in the finger guard and the pistol also fits beautifully into the holster. And same thing for the knife. With the Wave 1 snake eyes we saw some obstruction in there where the knife wouldn't go all the way down. Not a problem for Beachhead. The rifle is a little bit harder to get the trigger finger in there. But once you get it in there, it feels like it's locked in there. And then it has the front handle for the other hand. Beachhead also comes with a nicely sculpted backpack. And it has some pouches on the side, and I don't know whatever this tube is, and some nice wrinkles and straps, and hey, there's the bolts for the crossbow. And then I guess, is that a rocket on the side? But it has some kind of hose running down here to the bottom. It's got the peg that goes into the back, but I've noticed on mine, at least, the vest likes to stray away from the hole in the back. And that's good, that's nice, that's very uh, vintage inspired. But just like some of the stuff on the vest itself, I wish there were a few paint apps. Maybe on the little arrows, on the rocket, uh, just clasps, something. And then finally Wayne comes with a beret. Pretty good sculpt to it, it has this insignia on the front with the lightning bolt. And just like the Cobra Trooper helmet, you put it on the head, push it down a bit, and it's a perfect fit. It's nice and tight, it won't just fly off. But I don't really think of Beachhead as wearing a beret. It may be in the comics or something, but I don't know. To me, this goes, oh, hey, we're gonna get a flint sometime. Oops, I forgot to mention, the backpack has a slot right in the middle of it because of the blackness of everything there. It's hard to see, but that is to hold the crossbow. I like it like that, where it's flush against the backpack, but it's more secure if you raise it up a bit and push the ass end of it in there. It sticks out a bit, but it's more secure. Beachhead stands at six and an eighth inches tall, and he just looks great next to other Joes. I mean, I, <laughs> I love how this line is turning out. And even though Beachhead shares some parts with Duke, and has an overlay on the chest, Duke just seems to have more mass to him. And then Sneedon does clock slightly taller than Snake Eyes. Roadblock still towers over him appropriately, but Wayne is still taller than Scarlet. Again, the relative scale within the line. Ooh, 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 I love it. Because Destro's also a big guy in the cartoon, but then Beachhead and the Cobra Trooper, yeah, they're comparable. Here he is with my custom Outback and my stand-in Firefly for the moment. Oh, actually they have the same texture to their masks. Get another beach head and you can put it on here and paint it gray. Like Hasbro's not gonna do a Firefly. But if you do get that extra beach head for the head to add to Firefly, you can get a Commando Snake Eyes head. This is from Toy Box Customs. A little loose on the neck ball, which actually makes me think we're snake eyes. Oh, they don't share a neck ball size. That's odd. Beachhead's neck ball is smaller than most of the others. Here he is with a McFarlane Call of Duty figure that, <laughs> I don't know, Call of Duty. And then here's the Jazzwares Fortnite stand-in Dreadnought for my G.I. Joe collection. Here's my stand-in Storm Shadow, an articulated icon's deluxe ninja with an arms pack. And then I'm actually surprised to see the Moffex Batman fitting in fairly well here. And then for general Hasbro scale, what's wrong with that Stormtrooper? Here he is with Star Wars Black Series Stormtrooper and the Marvel Legends Black Panther. So at the end of the day, another fine addition to my G.I. Joe ranks. The Cobra Island assortment consists of a new version of Roadblock and a Cobra Trooper, Beachhead, and then Baroness on a coil motorcycle. And while I need that Baroness, I feel like she's the one most likely to show up in the main line. Beachhead was my biggie. Don't get me wrong, I want a bunch of Cobra Troopers, and I do like that new look for Roadblock. And I do have suspicions that they will take Beachhead and the Cobra Trooper and put them in the main line too. It may be redecoed Cobra Trooper in black or a lighter blue or something. And then Beachhead, maybe some camo on the pants, a darker green. But 
at the moment, it's a frenzy to get out there and try to find it. But after getting my hands on it, it is totally worth hunting down or having friends online that are in bigger cities with more targets. Like I said in the most recent weekly, G.I. Joe has become my main focus somehow over the past few weeks. I really dug the first wave. I had my problems with it, but with this and the Cobra Trooper, oh man, it feels like they're, <laughs> they took some of the gripes from wave one and said, okay, how about this? And that just sealed the deal for me. I didn't do G.I. Joe as a kid, so this is my G.I. Joe line. I think I've said that in several videos, but this is my G.I. Joe line. Hopefully this Friday brings a lot more beachheads, a lot more Cobra Troopers, and then finally Baroness, who nobody has seen in the U.S. yet. Hopefully the targets are overflowing and they go up on the website and they stay up and you can just pre it. But if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. Get the backpack on there. And this. And this. Yeah, and there you go. Everything you get in the package on him at the same time. I'm not going to display him like this, but the option for that is very cool.